I don't know if you, you have this experience in life, but I find you have this amazing transformative moment, which mm -hmm. you completely fail to notice. <laughs> and then sometime later you go, oh yeah, and you start connecting the dots. And so true. I'm, I'm a bit slow. Great Welcome, Ben, to Pivot Me. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. I'm uh, honored to be here. Yeah, it's going to be a great one. So we've been trying to get Ben on for a long time. He was a guest many, many, well, years ago now. And we're so glad that we finally got you on Pivot Me again so we can talk about about audio branding. So we're going to get into how you got into audio branding, the significance of it, um, and just kind of walk through why it's super important to either your business or your personal brand. But before we do that, can you just explain to us, Ben, what is audio branding? Well, I tell you, I'll start with what is an audio brand, because that's kind of, that's slightly easier. An audio brand really is just in the same way that a, in the same way that a visual brand represents, it represents the values, the mission, the the belief, the character, the voice of the brand, mm -hmm. or if it's a personal brand of essentially of you or a side of you. Um, and that's what it is. And what it does is it influences people's behavior, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a way of communicating. It's a way of connecting with your audience, your listener on an emotional level, very, very quickly and very, very powerfully far more powerfully and more quickly than visual i would say because it yeah, it actually goes there's a part of your brain deep down there the amygdala it just goes straight in there and then you start processing what you what you think about it wow. but everybody knows everyone has a song when it pops on it just kind of clicks for them um and it's more important, you'd say, than a visual brand, because I know that most most people are very comfortable with the idea of visual branding, and we we spend money and time and energy into crafting a visual brand. But you're saying, whoa, whoa, whoa audio brand is just as important, if not more important. In certain contexts, yeah, um, and that context increasingly is the internet. Um, mm. So, <laughs> yeah. so uh, yeah, I don't, I wouldn't say it's necessarily more important, although it can be in certain situations, but it's certainly. Um, it can be more impactful emotionally and certainly when it's combined with visual, it's insane. I mean, like Rocket the, the studies they've done, it's like 1200% more kind of emotional impact when you have visual and audio that is uh, properly married together, that's been created that way. Um, it, the impact of that is exponentially more than either of them on their own. So, yeah. Um, and what we're looking at now is a situation where we're all of us are kind of online more and more and more, mm -hmm. and yet screen time's going down globally. And the reason for that is the internet's going screenless effectively. So when you're out on your jog and you, when you're driving to work and you voice search for a podcast you want to listen to, you're not looking at anybody's logos, you're listening. Mm -hmm. And I always say to people, you have to kind of ask yourself, can your audience hear you? You might have the most amazing logo and fantastic visual brand for all mm -hmm. situations. But if you're moving into those spaces, if you're moving online and you're, whether it's YouTube or podcasts or whatever, if you haven't got the audio side, you're, you're kind of leaving a lot on the table. Yeah. So, so are we talking about like, for example, we'll just say like a podcast or a video, are we talking about the music at the beginning, the music at the end? Is it? Like what, what is it if a business owner is listening and go, okay, I still need to understand what an audio brand is. Yeah. Like where does I that apply? To, <laughs> I'm still working on how to explain this best. Yeah, I bet. Uh, it's nuanced. I'm, I'm looking for the, the light moment where I've explained it properly, but essentially it's like um, an audio brand or a sonic brand, pretty much the same thing. A sonic identity is it's a, a system of sound. It's not one thing. It's not so it's not the jingle on the radio or the the audio logo, the two second sting at the front of your YouTube video. It's all those things. Uh, that is the audio brand. So at the center of an audio brand, usually, especially with larger companies, you have what people sometimes call audio DNA. So it's it's a piece of music that's never played to anyone. It's pretty much not really intended to be played from start to finish to anybody, but it has all of the elements in there, the, the, the sounds, the beats, the timing, the timbre of the music, the instruments that are in there, it's, it's the kind of audio DNA of the company. And then out of that, 
that you create all of the kind of audio assets. And there are so many touch points with customers that, that can be enhanced that way. So whether it's the sounds in the app, whether mm. it's the call hold is a massive one. Mm, you know, call hold. So when someone dials into your company. It's unbelievable how many companies have like still these days have the most annoying <laughs> so call true. hold music or quite cool music that has absolutely mm -hmm. nothing to do with their brand. And it's just kind of an opportunity wasted where instead of it being like a, oh, how much longer am I going to be on the phone? It's, it's an opportunity to kind of create a moment or open people up to the actual marketing that you could be doing. So call hold in store, ambient sound in hotels. I mean, there was a supermarket chain in America um, that did a, an experiment with this and they used music that was much slower. Mm hmm they, their sales went up 34% because people kind of slowed down and wandered wow. around looked at what was on the shelf. And, oh, this is nice. So whereas, you know, I'm sure if you played some jungle music or some heavy metal thrash. They're like in and out real quick. Probably gone the other way. They yeah. knocked over like um, the end posts and stuff. They trashed <laughs> the place. Exactly. So in-store, on-call, webinars, uh, apps, um, podcasts, YouTube, TikTok, you know, you name it. All of those disparate things that brands are always trying to kind of pull together in a way, they all have to be treated slightly differently, mm -hmm. but they they all need something that kind of unites them together. And yeah. sound can do so much. It can You can do something with a piece of audio in one second. You can explain something in two, three seconds. You can get a mood across that would be much harder to do in in any other way, you know, just by telling someone. So... Yeah, that's, that's that's audio amazing. branding, really. It's, yeah. So I want to ask you in a second an example of who has done this well, um, but I just want to make sure it's really clear what audio branding is. And we mentioned visual branding before. So if you're a company or if you have a brand and you have a visual brand, meaning like we have one, right? So we have certain fonts that we, we have a we have a, a brand guide that we talk about the fonts that are allowed to be used in Pivot Me. We talk about the colors. This it's not just any orange. It is a very specific orange that we use all the time. So there is consistency through our visual elements. So if you look on our website, if you look on, you know, the podcast page, the 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 thumbnail logo, all of that stuff, there's a strategy to that. That's the visual strategy. So if you are listening right now and you've got a certain font that you guys use and you have your certain colors that you use and the certain like, you know, color palette that you always choose from, then think about pairing that with an audio brand. And Ben just mentioned a bunch of instances where, hey, this is a great place for um, for you to use your audio brand. Before we went online, Ben and I were just talking about, you know, Pivot Me went on YouTube, I don't know, probably about a year ago now. And it was interesting because I, I, I was telling him that we had one video editor and then we switched to another video editor. And um, there's some things that he did remarkable, but he changed the music. And so when I, and he'd gone through a couple of videos before I caught it. And then um, I, I finally pulled up one of the latest videos that our new editor had, had done for us. And I was like, this isn't our music. This doesn't work. And I, I was, as soon as that happened, I was like, this is exactly what Ben was talking about because if you are listening to the Pivot Me podcast, you get used to sort of this sort of suite of music or kind of music that we have. And then if you go and watch the YouTube, it, it can't feel like gears grinding, like, well, wait a second, this doesn't feel right. I would imagine, Ben, people can't even necessarily put into words why it wouldn't feel like Pivot Me, um, but yeah. they can just kind of sense there's like this incongruency. Ben, is this something that happens a lot? I mean, I would imagine video editors aren't necessarily attuned to this sort of thing. In a way, yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of one of the reasons I started doing this. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, why I've I've kind of married it with the the brand strategy side because you get tired of um, seeing like a, a fantastic, you know, someone who's really worked hard and understands personal branding or mm -hmm. branding for their business. They might have spent a lot of money and time putting together a fantastic brand that really communicates what they're about and really have thought about all of those things you know their mm -hmm. values who their customer is and maybe put together a fantastic 10 15 second 30 second video and somebody somewhere in that chain in the office especially in the bigger companies might turn around and go hey person who's been here a week who's interning can you just slap some music on that can you go find something mm. and off they go to one of the stock music sites and there's 
there is a place for stock music. I'm not slating it. There's some amazing stock music out there. But again, it's about awareness and intentionality there and knowing what you're choosing. And a lot of time it's just, you know, inspirational piano, uh, corporate rock track number 4032. Yeah. Slap yeah. that on there. And what you've, you've kind of, you've kind of marred what could have been something amazing. You, instead yeah. of adding to it at best, you haven't made it any worse, but a lot of the time you have. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was, that was a lot of the motivation around, around doing this because it's, it's just like, it's frustrating uh, I bet. to say. I bet. And when you're saying, Hey, there's a lot of great stock music out there. What I heard is there's a lot of great fonts out there and a lot of great colors out there, but you still want to <laughs> use your font and your color. It's the, yes, the, the that's same. exactly it. And can you give us an example of someone who does this really well? Like someone that if you're listening right now and you're like, okay, let me give it, let, let me get, understand an example of an audio brand. Like who does this well? I mean, one of the best examples I've seen uh, in the last few years, it's a big one, uh, but MasterCard in Europe. I don't know if they've rolled out in the US or not with this, mm -hmm. but um, most of the world now they have. So they've, they've done an incredible job. I mean, they've done a kind of a full vertical audio brand that goes across horizontally across all their channels, but all the way from the very top all the way down to when you put your card in the card machine, it plays the tune. Wow. It's literally it been implemented. I mean, the key thing more than anything is the consistency of how it and how it's implemented. And it's a great tune, mm -hmm. um, but they've really implemented it well. So it's all the way through the MasterCard experience from the website, all the way down to when you tap your contactless card, it goes, ba da 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 uh, if you're in Mumbai, it's a fantastic version of that song, but it's very different. It still mm. sounds amazing, but it's been done with local artists and musicians. So territories, channels, uh, applications, they really nailed it and really got behind it as well. They had, mm -hmm. they gave it a huge push when they launched it. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm just thinking about like, if, so say you've got a company that, um, is starting to release um, video, maybe on social media. So they, they're, I got an example. So say they're in the family entertainment business and they're starting to release more and more videos on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on Facebook. They're really making a push into the digital space. So if they're, they're listening right now and they're like, so what does it do? Like if we have an audio brand, like we take the time to actually have this, this strategy in place. How is it going to affect? Is it going to affect from a revenue perspective? Is it going to affect from people will listen to my videos longer? Like walk us sure. through what the upside is. So the upsides of audio branding are around brand recall and recognition. Mm, okay. Um, impact as well, but recall and recognition is huge. There is an ROI, um, a good ROI boost in sales and marketing from audio but that's primarily obviously because of that increased recognition mm -hmm. we all we're all working in a world where there's like a million things coming at us at the same time and sure. our minds are very very good at dealing with that you know it's still stressful for us all being attacked by <laughs> so much advertising but the reality is we and we were exposed to like a thousand marketing messages and images in the first probably hour you're up and on your way to work, you've seen so many things wow. and you, you filter them out. And what audio branding can do is kind of cut through that a little bit and set you mm. apart and set you above. Um, and as I said before, because it kind of hasn't this emotional aspect to it, if it's done right, you remember it. Mm -hmm. And that whole thing about having to, you know, you've got to put yourself in front of people five or six times. Mm -hmm. Well, if you've left five or six of those opportunities just sitting there, you've missed out. And yeah. the, the reality is the big brands understand this and increasingly influencers and, and some of the bigger YouTuber stars definitely understand this. Gary mm -hmm. V has um, famously gone all in on audio branding and every video he does has his little audio ident at the beginning. And mm. so he, he's gone all in on it, but, um, but it, it works, it works for everything, you know? I would imagine I'm just thinking if my, like if I'm scrolling through Instagram and I hear a Gary V video, I'm going to immediately have like this, 
emotional response, a sense of what's kind of a anticipation of what's to come versus if it's just arbitrarily picked music, it's like, well, maybe, maybe it evokes a certain emotion or feeling, but if yeah. Gary Vee's done this well, it's like, oh, I, I totally know what's coming. And I understand like I'm, I'm already being sold on Gary Vee's message before I've heard him open his mouth is what I'm thinking. Yeah. So the, there's that. There's also the fact that it influences how you feel companies and things. They understand that you need to kind of, you need to set people, settle people down. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on. So that it's also an opportunity to go, okay, we're going to take you on this journey now. I mean, Disney is a perfect example. The opening da -da 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 -da, Disney twinkle, mm -hmm. um, it, it sets the tone. So it does that too. Yeah, um, I could see that. But I'm just, I'm processing that. And I was like, yeah, there, there is a certain feeling that you get and sort of like, all right, the, mu the movie's beginning. I'm just thinking about watching a show like that with my kids. You hear that sound and then everybody kind of cuddles up on the couch with blankets and, and then we're ready to begin on this journey. So besides audio branding, I mean, you're a composer, you've been a composer for years. And I'm curious, like how y you mentioned that, Hey, I see this, this you know, well-crafted message and it kind of gets lost because they don't have the audio branding, but what got you into this specifically? Is it, is it because you saw that people weren't doing it well out there? I mean, how did you, how did you end up in this space? Oh, well, it was a bit of a wild journey. Um, it always so is. I, as yeah, isn't it? It always is. Mm -hmm. Um, so I started out as a singer songwriter and I kind of got sidetracked, semi sidetracked into a, uh, an events career, outdoor events for like, big brands like Xbox and others doing kind of on street concerts and things like that. Um, and so I kind of had both of those, both of those things in my background. Mm -hmm. And then I went into, I launched a podcast production company, which is of course how we met. Um, <laughs> and the more I got into that, the more interested I just, I just got really, really interested in, in that side of things. The yeah. brand effectively what I ended up at was brand strategy because I kept moving back a step and went, okay, but, but why, why would you do this and not that? I mean, there must be some way of organizing this. And I ended up learning all about brand strategy and audio branding. And it just, it's just kind of been a combination of all the things that I'm interested in. So mm -hmm. I've always, the one thing I've always been able to do is what uh, people used to call earworms. I've always been able to do that. It's like ah. create a little a little five note thing or whatever that you just cannot get rid of. That was mm -hmm. my thing, melody. Um, but in, in getting more and more into brand strategy, I just kind of fell in love with the idea of like, it's, it's something about being able to, to kind of just by, by getting to know someone or getting to know a company and a brand, able to kind of express that in such a direct and kind of, concise way you know mm -hmm. i think the first one was that because actually the first time it really hit me was working with you because yeah. i was trying i was trying to put together the pilot episode it all comes back to me did you hear that guys did but did you just give me credit for that is that what i'm just teasing uh, uh, not intellectual property though we, <laughs> there we go <laughs> we'll cut that bit um but yeah no I, I was putting together your pilot i think which is a go now but um I had a very specific sense of who you were. It's why we connected so quickly. I'm like, mm -hmm. I want to work with this person. And, and because of that, I wasn't happy. I was sort of going through the, the music sites and everything. And I just couldn't find anything that felt right. I remember you know? that. Yeah. You're like, this doesn't fit. You had me do like a, um, what was it? It wasn't a, uh, what's it called? Not a brand board, but like you had me go on Pinterest. First I had a to create board. a a mood board. Yeah, yeah. First, I had to create a Pinterest account. Then next step, <laughs> I was like, no, no, that's like baking and stuff. No, 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 it's not. It's so much more than that. But you had me go on Pinterest and, and pull a mood board together, which actually was way more fun than I expected and really became this amalgamation of who April Garcia is. That's the first time I had done yeah. a mood board. Yeah. And I just couldn't find anything that fit that. It, 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 it was nothing that had the sense of kind of the individuality, the, the kind of ballsiness it just and and i after a while i'm like i've spent so many hours trawling through this i could have written it by now and i just yeah. so i just it was just frustration it wasn't me going i am now going to create an audio brand i just thought i'll do it i'll do it 
I'm gonna stuff out your shit. I'm going to create yeah. it myself. This is what she sounds like. And just like bashed that thing together, got really inspired and kind of, it got way out of control and became a whole track. Um, but that's when the magic happens, isn't it? Mm. And uh, yeah. And lucky for me, you liked it and and told lots of people about it. That was sure that did. was one of the first times I did it, and it was it, you know because I don't know if you, you have this experience in life, but you, I find you have this amazing transformative moment which mm-hmm. you completely fail to notice, <laughs> <laughs> and then some time later you go, oh yeah, and you start connecting the dots. You know, so true. Oh, me, I'm, I'm a bit slow. It's, but, it totally um, happens. You're like, oh, there was a life before and after this moment. I just didn't realize it when I was in that moment. Yes. Yeah, so you mm-hmm. sort of see it in the rear view mirror when you're like a mile down the road. Um, totally. But you can always turn around. So, um, so yeah, that was the first one, I think. And then um, there was a couple of others, but then it was only during COVID when it, the, the idea really hit me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it's really only in the last, what, six months that I've, been in a position to actually do it and it's been yeah. a big thing to kind of go yes I've got this busy business but I'm going to do this now sure you know? sure because this um, was previously something that bigger businesses do so guys that's the, yeah. the the big companies have this figured out and they do it well and it does help their sales and it does help their brand recall and all these sorts of things but previously this is something that's sort of like oh it's just for the big guys and Ben, that's one of the things you've done is you've translated it to it's for the medium guys and it's even for the small guys. It's people that have personal brands. It's, um, you know, one of the things, obviously Ben works with um, us at the podcast and is remarkable. You probably already have recognized his voice because he's part of our intro. Um, ben has a very recognizable voice, but Ben is also in um, the Pivot Me Academy. And I've watched you talk to even, you know, one of the people that, um, I've I've watched you talk to about this was was Kevin that has a law practice and he's putting more and more stuff out digitally and it's like so you're talking about doing this with personal brands too like all right all right Kevin you could put out videos that are very informational you know answer questions that people want to know about law add um, some real value but you're talking about building an audio brand for something like that too that both incorporates a feeling and emotion but also incorporates Kevin and Kevin is a pretty interesting cat. So like, how do you incorporate like a lawyer who's also into show tunes? I mean, it's a complicated case. It is. But then, I mean, that's, that's, I can't wait to do that. I mean, that, th- those are the ones <laughs> yeah. that get you fired up. You know, it, the things I find the things that are re- really effective is finding those things. It's finding mm-hmm. those contradictions and those things that don't seem to go together. I think that's, that's what's interesting about it. I worked on um on a podcast that was, uh, well, it was, it was a brand because it was a, she, a lady who had a membership community and wanted to start a podcast, but um, she was so different from what you might expect when you get the email saying, I'm doing a podcast about Tudor history. You know? mm. She was not what you'd expect. She was a rock and roll Nashville gal, like rock and roll journalist all her life. Um, and completely at odds with the kind of, most of them British kind of very, very straight laced, really like verbal essays on history, you know, and she sure. was much more entertainment, really entertainment yeah. side. And that was, I mean, that was a gift. I loved working on that. Um, I bet. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it was one of those ones where you just go, actually, I know I've started with, um, with magical flutes and, and little guitars and things but what about if we threw those out the window and we went full-on stomp rock swamp blues and That's you know awesome. and, and blow, really blew their hair back and that one was one of the most fun ones i've worked on because it it did kind of take people's expectations and then completely flip them you know? totally you're you're dialing in to listen to a podcast on tudor history and then you hear that and you're like whoa okay wait a second this is something very 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 different i mean it really does recalibrate expectations and get pe- and gets people attention. The the thing I'm also hearing is it helps you find your audience quicker too. Like, oh, this is for me or this is not for me. Um, you know, yeah. just from a marketing perspective, if you talk to everyone, you talk to no one. So it's very important for you to kind of quickly identify mine, not mine. 
for your audience um, and your audience to do the same thing. So what your audience is listening for is, do I want a lawyer that also likes show tunes? I say that because like your example earlier, it would be easy for someone to you know, pull a piece of music for a law practice and it's going to be kind of stale, right? It's going to be stock music. It's going to be like, well, it's, it's a law practice. Like how exciting can it be? Both Kevin and I'm just thinking about, um, a friend of mine, uh, Matt Davis, he's been on a while ago as well. He's really into, um, hard rock. And I want to say he was in, oh, he's going to kill me for not remembering, but it's like, Oh, it's not Iron Maiden or Twisted Sister, but it's in that same vein. And he listens to it blaring in his office. Now, when you look at a lawyer from Enid, Oklahoma, the small town that owns all these law practices around the nation, but you're looking at him and you're like, oh, I've got his number. But no, no, no. We need to find out if he has an audio brand now that I think about this. Um, Ben, I might have to introduce you to Matt. But just thinking about that that's a very different feel and so if he wants to capture a little bit about kind of who he really is and how he would approach his lawyering different than maybe some other people i mean this is an opportunity for an audio brand i mean it just both i'm talking about you know in personal brands and smaller businesses brand it's both an expression of the owner but also it helps your audience go yeah that's the guy i want to work with like that seems pretty awesome that is exactly right and it's, it's about, I mean, I said before, it's about um, creating an emotional connection. Mm-hmm. And it is, but that's that's how you do it. Essentially, I mean, if people talk about that resonated with me. Mm-hmm. That is 100% what you're doing. So mm. when you go back to the kind of the brand strategy side, which is, you know, so important, you're figuring out who you are in, in a sort of archetypal sense, who, you know, are you an adventurer or whatever it might be? What kind of person are you and what kind of person is your audience and where is the overlap? What side of you resonates with them the most? And then be that. Don't try to kind of be all things. Don't try to, don't shy away from that. Be that because that's your filter and that's that's how you find your people. And there's more than enough people out there, you know. And I, I think, you know, we were talking before about, um, you know, the kind of the noise essentially, trying to cut through the noise the chaos of, you know, a million mm-hmm. messages, a million podcasts and all the rest of it. And I, I was thinking about this earlier and the opposite of noise, the opposite of chaos, it's not order. It's not silence. It's harmony. Hmm. It's when you have, instead of those things all fighting against each other or your message kind of fighting against the person listening, it's that, that connection is where who they are as a person and part of who you are as a person and that kind of if you can find that overlap Mm -hmm. and express it in the right way so that it really kind of hits them in the feels they will remember that they will remember you and that's Mm. the game and that what go back and re-listen to what just what ben just said because that is brilliant i'm just thinking about it myself it's very important to understand that this is how you really, really get into like truly hit your audience powerfully and not try to sort of do this, you know, lukewarm general approach that you think, okay, well, I want a more kind of generalized message so that I speak to everybody. I really want to go back to when you try to speak to everyone, you speak to nobody, instead of trying to speak to everyone and impact them from a surface, you know, a a minor level, He's talking about profoundly impacting your exact people, the exact people who want to work with you because they're going to, it, it resonates with them and you're going to empower them to, to work with you on such a deeper level. And there's going to be, you know, brand affinity. There's going to be, you know, loyalty and all those things that come with it because they're like, oh, I get that person that I understand them and they understand me, which is very different than just put on your regular hold music and hope they don't hang up before your customer service person picks up the phone. Absolutely. But it only works. I mean, you can hire the best visual designers, audio designers, marketing, uh, social media managers, but if you don't know who you are and you don't have that really nailed down, um, it doesn't work. Whereas Mm. if you do, and you know who they are, it's much easier to create all those little micro content, micro stories and, and kind of put your content out there that's on point. But I think, um, yeah, if you, if you can, if you can do that, then, um, that's, that's the game. When you say 
who you are, know who you are. Cause so we're, we're, we're definitely moving into the branding space, right? Like the actual branding of you or your business. Yep. So what does that mean? Is that like, help me understand that if a business is listening right now, they're like, well, who am I? Well, we provide ex excellent, you know, roofing services or, you know, lawyer advice. Like what, what do you mean by who you are? Well, it's about building, I think it's about building a, a foundation of substance, basically. Mm. You have to start there. So figuring out, I mean, it's different depending on the size of your company, of course. But sure. For a lot of people, it, a lot of people, it is them um, or a, a representation of, of them. So sure. uh, for a lot of people, that's where they start. But in sort of figuring out what your internal beliefs are at, at a fundamental level, what you believe, why do you believe that? Well, why do you believe that? Then just keep going until you can't go any further. And that's pretty much your core beliefs. Um, and finding an, an authentic why that that's rooted in you. Why are you doing the thing mm -hmm. you're doing? Mm -hmm. Why do you think it can help someone? Um, it, uh, there, uh, there's a lot of talk about, um, brand purpose, mm -hmm. um, that, uh, that can be amazing, but it only works. People are really good at sniffing out. If it's not, <laughs> if it's not authentic, it really okay. does need to be, it can't just be, oh, we need a purpose. Let's help, you know, random charity. Um, mm -hmm. it does need to come from uh, an authentic place. Um, mm -hmm. And then you kind of build from there. So um, coming up with a, essentially what you're trying to do is come up with a human, you, you're trying to get to a point where you have, your brand is a human personality. You can describe who you know. Uh, and it, it will fit into some form of, you know, your, your brand will be uh, an adventurer or a leader or a, a coach or a guide or a, a a magician or a you know there are these kind of archetypes floating around in in the zeitgeist but it, it's kind of figuring out who your brand is and who your customer is and then making that connection yeah yeah and what that's, would... so you you go all the way from like personality then you get through to well, what kind of voice do we want to speak in mm -hmm. what what what's gonna what is our person going to respond to it are, are mm -hmm. we are we forceful are we soft are we brash are we rebellious are we and you start pulling these words and these things together mm -hmm. and it's only really when you've done like that's like 90 percent of it really but you don't see that a lot of the time mm -hmm. because why would you that's all in, you know on a folder somewhere yeah but that's like 90 percent of it and it's only when you've done all of that that you can get to the to the point where you, you potentially bring someone like me in if i'm not working on the strategy side and kind of go, okay, here it is. This is the person. This is what they're like. This is what they've got to say. And it, from that's, you know, when you get that, you're like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because it's, sense. it's so much easier. Would you say that's, kind of express it. Would you say that's what a lot of businesses are, are missing? I mean, what, what are businesses doing wrong in this space? Is it just that they're not thinking ahead on that? Is it that they they've given no thought? Maybe they don't realize that this, this piece is, is important. I think it's it's a couple of things. I think for, for one thing, as a business owner, I know it's like you, you, you're building the car while you're driving it <laughs> at 100 miles an hour. Yes. And what's that old joke about? Oh, you, you've got a flat tire and the people in the car say, well, we can't change the tire. We're doing 100 miles an hour here. Um, mm. So I, you don't always know this stuff when you start out. You know, you, not everybody's sure. like Unilever and they're starting a new sub brand and they can spend a year developing it first so you, mm -hmm. you figure this stuff out on the go and another thing is i i think it's, it's something i've heard you say it's like <laughs> you can't read the ingredients from the inside of the jar and it's i so stole that from my do. friend matt Stur i have to i feel like i have to give matt well, credit for that it's so true because it's so true it's, it's so, so true, true. you I've can't had, you can't read the label when you're on the inside it's so hard to do i mean i've i've had to do it you know and even with all of the tools in front of you and knowing how to do it when it's you, it's a different story. It's mm -hmm. very, very hard to do. So I think there's that as well. And then I just think there's a lot of focus on, obviously, that audio branding is relatively, relatively new. I mean, it's it's been around a long time, really, but it's only since Intel in the, when was that, 92, maybe, I think. Ba -da -ba -dum. You know, when that came along, people started waking up to it. McDonald's, that one's huge. Oh, yeah. But huh. 
it, you know, it's everywhere. Yeah. But, but it's, it's still relatively new. Mm-hmm. And I also think there's a lot of focus on the brand expression because that's what people see. It's a bit mm-hmm. like that whole thing of like, you only see people's highlight reel on mm-hmm. social media. Well, you only see the, the expression of the brand. You don't see the rest of it and you, you wouldn't know. Sure. You know, you wouldn't know, would you? It, it's, it's kind of the, pres- has been the preserve of bigger brands, I think. Um, so, yeah, I, th- I think it's just, it's, it's a, something that whose time has come. Um, we're all having to be smarter on this stuff now. So I just think it's like a, a bit of a secret weapon. It sure sounds like it. I'm just thinking you're exactly right. It's been something that's been reserved to bigger companies. And when you hear the example, the McDonald's, Intel, you know, Netflix, all of that stuff, you immediately go, oh, yep, I recognize that. Um, And I have emotions around that. This doesn't have to be some massive undertaking that only big, big, big business gets to experience or even be able to afford. Like this is something that now is available to smaller businesses, medium-sized businesses, even personal brands and podcasters out there. Most podcasters start out, we all know this, right? Most podcasters start out and they're like, all right, I'm going to use my garage band and I'm going to pull my stock music. Oh shit. It sounds like everybody else's stock music, which definitely happens. It's like the podcast starts and you're like, wait, is this, is it this podcast or that podcast? Because there's too much similarities. And that's where a lot of people start out. But once you're a little bit more established, or if you kind of want to do it right from the beginning, think about the audio brand, think about how your podcast starts and the music that plays through it um, is, is really important. And it's not something again, that's reserved for the big guys. Like we get to participate in this and we get to have an audio brand and it really can lever, it can boost your brand in such significant ways. Ben, is there, is there other ways to boost your brand around audio branding? Like, is this kind of the, the major things we need to look at? Is there anything else that we need to look at from a branding perspective? Um, well, I mean, it, it, it depends a little bit. I mean, I think the, the personal branding side is, is primarily going to be podcasts, YouTube, mm-hmm. TikTok, Facebook, you know, the, the, the usual suspects. And I think that's, a lot of that is about just having little assets that you can just, you can just literally brand mm-hmm. with your audio so that everything that comes out has that. And then it's more about um, having like, like we produce, when we produce an audio brand, you get a style guide, which is a no brainer for a visual brand. Yeah. But with audio branding, people are kind of just wondering, just, just doing their best. You know, mm-hmm. they might pick something. Most people pick something they like, which mm. It, mm. And that's a mistake often. Um, it, ca- it can be the right thing. It could just, be that they pick music they like. That's it. Just like, they oh, pick this- music they like, um, or they pick music that goes with the tone of the video, mm. but not necessarily. So you could pick something that um, that has an emotion, the correct emotional tone. It's, you know, it's like inspiring, starts off sad, goes inspiring, lifts, whatever. But if it's Every got a YouTube video the, out there. Yeah, exactly. But if it if it's too bland, it won't appeal to anyone. If it's got mm. the wrong kind of beat in it that's just appeals to like a 20 year old and your audience is 50 or vice mm-hmm. versa, it's not going to hit. Um, mm. And it's just. Yeah, it's it's like I would say you, you, it's not like you have an audio brand and then you just use those assets. Not at all. You have those assets and then you have a style guide that explains what kind of things you should be using just as you would with a visual brand you wouldn't kind of just change up your prime your colors in your brand for every sign and every banner and every shop front wouldn't have Mm -hmm. a different color on it but there might be differences but they're just intentional and systemized Mm -hmm. and carefully thought through so yeah so and And i'm just oh go ahead sorry no no go ahead i was gonna say uh in in real time i'm just thinking about the youtube example that we went through at pivot me so what i'm realizing is that i need to schedule a strategy session an audio brand strategy session with you right now um i mean not right now but we'll do it um we'll do it this week we need to schedule one because i'm just thinking about it i want to make sure that we don't and, and guys this is this is real time pivoting i don't want us to put one more youtube video out that has that has the wrong kinds of music that is not both representing our brand speaking to our avatar because our avatar is typically in their 40s sometimes 50s and 60s but you know our avatar either 
the listeners to the podcast or even the people that are in mastermind, like they're not 25. If the, if the music or the audio brand sounds like if we're selecting stuff for our YouTube videos that are speaking to a younger audience. And I'm just thinking about this. Um, a while ago, we'd hired a, um, a YouTube advisor and they were pulling the audience, the demographic for who was listening to the videos. And they were much younger than who listens to the podcast and who comes into the pivot me academy and i was like what where's the disconnect because i don't think that a 22 year old was this an ageism but just typically that's not who our audience is our audience are people that have you know owned businesses for years and most 22 year olds haven't i'm just thinking there's a disconnect there and so real time i've got to sit down with you and walk through okay what what music should our video editors be pulling for this the video editor is doing a great job at at, at editing the video and the the things that are flying into the screens and all that stuff however they might need a little bit of guidance on the audio that's picked it can't just be inspirational pan piano music like every other youtube video out there it's got mm. to sound like us yeah and i always said your brand if your brand was a person their collar would be popped <laughs> <Remember that. laughs> That has great ways of describing people like that. That is that is one of your true, I realize you're a composer and I realize audio is your space. You're remarkable at that. But the, the thing that always blew me away too is just your expertise and insight on branding. It's always on point. There are so many times we have, you know, we've worked with branding companies many, many times and PR firms and marketing firms and all this sort of stuff. And we'd be headed in one direction and Ben would just give this gentle little nod. Well, have you considered this? And he would set us off in a different direction. That was always the right direction. So I've just got to give you a shout out, Ben. That just always blew me away and how you did that. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's obviously something you, you, you sometimes don't realize how interested like you, when you look back, you go, oh, I've always been interested in that. And I've always been mm. like taking my focus has always been on it. I just haven't really been aware of it. So it's fun to put the two things together. For sure. Ben, I, so we talked a lot about audio branding. We've talked about what, um, brand out loud design does. I would love for us to quickly just touch on what was it like pivoting into this work? So most of the listeners are business owners and they've undergone big changes. And we talk about things like self-sabotage and we talk about things like imposter syndrome and we talk about the struggles and procrastination. Did you have some challenges in pivoting your business in this direction when you already have another business that is is working, it's fine, you've got great clients, you, like you, you're good at this other thing. What was it like pivoting? It was fine, there was no problems. <laughs> <laughs> Super easy. The hell Absolutely it was. Absolutely fine. Oh, you're the only I one no that issues. made it fine. <laughs> I knew exactly what I needed to do and I did it every single day. <laughs> I think that's, that's called a loaded question because you've seen, I, I certainly had my struggles. Yes. I, I'm what I, I think my dad said once, um, my dad's Welsh. So you've got to imagine like a, an old Welsh man in his seventies, but he said, do you know what son? He said, at every point in my life, I've known the right thing to do. And I've done it about three years later. <laughs> and so uh, true. Relatable. for me, this is some, this is something that, I thought of years ago and just I've been on such a journey of like doubting and and all the other things mm -hmm. and it and I think I've I nailed down what my my procrastination my self-sabotage thing mm -hmm. you know, I, I we all do it for and, sure and mine one of us. very much was like I will continue to complicate this idea until it can no longer sustain I'll just keep hanging things on it until it collapses under its own weight and then i don't have, i don't have to do it because it <laughs> that is the most um, relatable thing ever whoever's <laughs> listening right now is laughing and going oh my gosh i get this completely but what i got to i think i just got to a point uh last year where and and really i mean being frank it, it was it was joining the mastermind that did it it oh. was having a it's, it's true though i mean it was it was having a group of peers um, which I'd not had because it's a, it can be, I nearly swore then. It's a lonely business. You, you can swear. Remember, we're, we're now putting E for explicit. Oh, so. good. Strap okay. yourselves in everyone. Here I go. There it goes. <laughs> it's the seven no-nos of HBO coming right at you. It no, is right. Um, but yeah, it, it, it was joining that group because I'd not had a community, hmm. uh, a group of peers because 
nobody I knew did this stuff, you know, in mm-hmm. fact, it's, it's very hard to explain to them what you're doing or why. Um, it, it's, it's, it, you know, I don't have to explain being an entrepreneur is, mm-hmm. is not for everyone. So, and it, it's, um, it's lonely and it's hard yes, and you don't know that you're making is. the right decisions. And the way our brains work is we're constantly stacking evidence to support why it's not the right decision, why this might fail, why you, what you have should already be good enough. Aren't you already satisfied with what you've done? And we'll add complexity to it when we have a family. If I go after something more, I'm going to sacrifice time with my family, my loved ones. What am I going to yeah. have to give up to reach for something more? This is what we all, that's why I asked you the question is because we all do this and it's just so relatable when we see someone, you know, we have lots of authors and speakers and experts on Pivot Me and it's amazing, but I always want to take a, that extra step to, to humanize us all because we're all having very similar struggles. So we can both highlight someone's expertise and go, man, it was really hard to do this. It was really hard to leave something that was already working and do this other thing. Or, or I didn't know anyone else who did this. How could I go out on this limb and do something that I didn't know a single person who was doing this type of work? It just, it makes it relatable, right? A hundred percent. And I found, you know, I, I've listened to by dint of what I do for a living, I've listened to more of your podcasts and others than most people. Sure. So the, the information is in there. The knowledge is in Mm -hmm. there. But it's one thing to talk the talk and another to walk the walk. And I think so joining the mastermind was the beginning of walking the walk and kind of having real people that you talk to every week. You know, there's an accountability bit about it, but there's mm-hmm. also just the sort of the if they can do it, I can do it kind of thing. Do you know what mm. I mean? It's just like like you're, what you're saying. It's like humanizing it. And I mean, I've you know, I've what the kind of journey I've been on. I've mm-hmm. I was pretty low, pretty I, I had a hell of a lot of work, but I wasn't particularly happy mm. um, because so all relatable. I did was work. Mm-hmm. And I was, I, I mean, I, in the last, what, four, five, six months when it's really kicked in, I've lost 40 pounds. I've <gasps> started a new business. Um, and everybody says I'm like, I'm not a different person. I'm just, I'm kind of me again, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, home. so it's... <laughs> Yes, returned to who I am. Uh-huh. Um, so that's been fantastic. And just to have the kind of simple, the kind of straightforward, um, I, I'm struggling to put it into words, but it's the power uh, that a baby has when they just reach for a rattle because they want the rattle. I, I, that's a silly example, but it's the only one I can think of. It's very straightforward, you know. Before you learn to complicate things, before you learn to to tell yourself you can't do it or whatever it might be, mm-hmm. you just you just see what you want. You go for it. And it was actually a conversation with this is a very long answer. I'm sorry. No, it's it was great. Actually a conversation with um, with Kevin, of all people. Show tunes, lawyer, Kevin. Show tunes, lawyer. Shout out to the K-Dog because um, <laughs> talking to him, I was talking about something completely different, another it was it was an interesting idea around podcasting mm-hmm. and somehow we made this like offhand this was in like a one-to-one we we're just having a chat and i made some offhand comment like i mean obviously it's not you know it's not what i really like to do but blah blah blah, blah. and i I wasn't really aware of it, that i'd said it mm-hmm. even and mm-hmm. he went whoa 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 mm-hmm. what, what do you mean what you'd really like to what do you really want to do and uh i will be forever grateful for him for just that simple question because I explained it to him, audio branding. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I explained it to him, he got so excited. <laughs> he, he said, I'm all hang up. I got to go down the hall and tell someone about this. <laughs> and that led to a call and that led to a conversation with someone else and blah, 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 blah. And, and it's really been, uh, that was the moment that it kind of took off for me. Uh, and I haven't looked back. How many of us are doing something that we don't necessarily want to do? And we don't even realize that language slips out. What, what I, what I'm kind of hearing Ben is that that was the moment where maybe Kevin, maybe someone gave you permission to do the thing that you actually want to do. Yeah, I think so. And, but I also think, I mean, the biggest thing for me was the end of the year last year was kind of when the the biggest decision I made was to decide to work on me which mm. I've never, you know, you, you, I don't mean just like, oh, I'll read this book or whatever. I mean, I will actually take the time to, to work 
on the things I need to work on to get myself to the point where I can do this thing. Because I, I know if I can do that, it will work. And that was where the weight loss started. And that was where the, the attitude started to change. But it was, it was knowing, it was kind of going all the way back. I was like, well, if, if I want to do that, then I mm-hmm. need to do this. And if I want to do this, then I need to do this. But I can't do this because I haven't even got the energy to do it anymore. I'm Ooh. so beaten down. I need, so where do I need, I need to start all the way back mm-hmm. with me. Um, and that's, and I still need to work on me and I will continue to work on me. But that yeah. was the, we don't develop. just understanding that. No, we we don't, don't, I'm not finished. We, we don't graduate from this type of work. Ben, ben it's interesting. I, I won't be finished for another couple of weeks, probably. Then I'll be <laughs> Then I'll, I'll be, be totally perfect. done. I'll nail it. I'll be it. totally finished. Well, I, I want to point out that so many people, we, we actually talked about this in the mastermind. I didn't know we were headed in this direction, but I, I love it because I love hearing, Ben, you have transformed so much or maybe returned home, but it's been remarkable to watch you on this journey. journey. And so I'm so glad that we got to touch on this because there are people out there that are at your starting point. They were where they are now listening where you were a year ago. And so you just kind of sharing, we are so accustomed to seeing everyone's highlight reel, whether that's social media on our website. Oh, they're an expert in this. Oh, they must be nailing it. And so when we kind of talk about that messy backstory, we're seeing other people's highlight reel while we're living our backstory. It makes it like, well, maybe it's available to someone like me too, which we've talked about the power of that, of that concept. So many people even even working with me they come to me whether that's you know consulting whether that's in the mastermind they come looking for skill set and and we're like okay yep we're going to give you the skill set they almost always need mindset and so when i hear i took this time to work on me my guess is that time was not dedicated to skill set because you already had the skill set no exactly it had Nothing to be mindset set. all mindset yeah why mm. am i in my own way mm. uh, becoming an expert in in how to get the best out of me, really. Because, okay, Ben, I'm totally putting you on the spot, but Ben has created some remarkable mantras. Ben, were you a mantra person before? <laughs> no, I was the anti-mantra. <laughs> so Ben maybe was involved with Pivot Me. Ben knows probably the sound of Pivot Me more than anybody else in this world. And yet he's like, know if some of this stuff is for me ben has since converted we we got him in our camp but um ben can you share a couple of your mantras because they're remarkable um yeah yeah no i guess so um i just think i've got like 12 now but i'm only using a few of them at the there's there's two that we've written down (laughs) because they're so good uh well there's one which is um just a simple one which is today is where i forge all my tomorrows Mm, so good whatever i'm doing today is what determines every other day so little decisions yeah um there's one around delegation to make sure that only you're focusing on the genius zone that's that's not mine um but i do use it okay it's um i only do what only i can do Mm. And that's a powerful one yeah. for the fellow control freaks out there talking to you. <laughs> um, he sees you. I see you. And the other one was success is a path I'm already walking. Yes. You shared that one in the and mastermind last week. Yeah. For me, that's about like, um, just like, it's not really in the mantra, but in my mind, it's about how, Everything you do, every step you take, Mm -hmm. every misstep you take is the path of success. It doesn't matter almost. You don't want to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. We all do. The faster, the faster you do, the the quicker you learn. It's, it's not a new idea, but it just, for me, it was like, I'm already walking the path of success. It's Mm. not some mythical thing out there. I am doing it now. Um, yeah, that's a huge change. What I love is none of those are anchored to the past. And that's where we get this wrong. I always say you choose your mantras or they will be chosen for you by your brain and they will always be bad. And they're usually pulling from past failures and saying, you know, be careful doing this because remember how you screwed this one up. Remember starting this new business because you had another one failed. You know, be careful when you go into partnership with this person because remember you had another partner that screwed you over in the past. Like what I hear in those, in your mantras is that none of them are contingent on 
on the past. It's all it's already, it's, I'm already walking this path. This is already happening. Look at every day I'm stacking up, um, reasons why my success is inevitable. Not that there won't be missteps. There will, there will. I think it's, um, Tom Billy that says failure is just data points. And if we just anchor to yes. when we screw up, all it is, is a data point. It is not personal. Like it's, it's yes. us and the stories that we build around them that that hurt us. And we're almost always the chokehold to our business. If your business is under 50 million and you're running it, you are the chokehold to that business. hundred percent. Like if you want to you know what's wrong with your business. And you are the break. Totally. Totally. <laughs> if you're like, what's you wrong with the You are the car and you are the road bump. It's you. It is you. Um, it is you. And, and most of the people that are listening are, their revenue is under 50 million a year. Um, you are the chokehold to your business. And so, yes, you can. Hole. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you can either, you can go out and get more skill set. You certainly can, but it's almost always not a lack of skill set. You can, you, um, you know, you staff for weaknesses. You can staff for your weaknesses. You can staff for skill set. But what you can't outsource is your mindset. Ben, this Very is huge. True. So true. I, I just love seeing what you've done. Um, I'm so grateful to work together for, where are we at? Four years now? Four yeah, years? Four years. Yeah. I'm gonna Me tell too. the I'm gonna tell the story real quick. So I, as you guys probably remember, I started the podcast on a dare from a client, a client named Al Klein. I was I was leading his mastermind and he said, Hey bro, I'm gonna I'm gonna dare you. I, I'm gonna dare you to have a podcast, to start a podcast this year. And I said, Al, I'll see you right. I'll see your um your challenge and I'll raise it. I'm gonna have one by the end of the week. And it was like on a Tuesday and I immediately was like, how do I do this? And I just record this message into my phone and I don't know. And then I go and I was like, how do I even edit this thing? How do I get it out of my phone or out of, yeah, I remember Ed Milet talking about something similar where you're like, how do I get it from a microphone? I think it was my phone, my phone at the time into like the laptop. How does that part happen? <laughs> and then I, lo I, I looked, I was like, all right, I'm going to do a post. I'm going to do a job post and I'm going to find someone who can help me, you know, edit this thing to produce this thing. And I had like five appointments set up um, and Ben was my second conversation. And I was like, that's it. He's the guy. He's the guy right away. Um, and Pivot Me would not be what it is today um, if I hadn't met Ben on that fateful day. And what a journey that we've been on together. We certainly have. Yeah. It's been a blast. It's been a blast. <laughs> Oh, I'm so grateful. So grateful for that. Um, ben, what you're doing is phenomenal. I love audio branding. I, I see such, you know, you, you did it for us and it was so important. Um, and I see how applicable this is to so many personal brands out there, to so many businesses, you know, large businesses already doing it. But if you're a medium business or a small business, you're looking at this going, yeah, this is, this is absolutely um, possible for us. And you've already heard the upsides. Ben, if, if someone is listening and they're like, is this, is this something I do now? Like, is this, is this pressing? Is this something that I really should execute on right away? What would you say to, you know, a business owner or a podcaster or someone even just pushing into the digital space that's sort of on the fence about this? I would say, um, if you're moving into, if you're moving into YouTube and you're moving into content marketing and all of those things. If you've not got something in place, um, then you are, you need to have it. Mm. You don't necessarily need the all singing, all dancing, you know, massive audio brand. Not everybody has a million dollar budget, mm -hmm. but you need something. You do. You need a strategy, you need a plan, and you need something in place. And that could be a full audio brand with five touch points across all different channels and all the rest of it. Or it could be that you have just something that goes on your videos, like a watermark and you have mm. a style guide and you have, you know, just a few things, but I, I would say the same thing. If you don't, you know, if you're doing that and you don't have a visual brand or you don't have a coherent visual brand, mm -hmm. um, then you are pushing a boulder up a hill. Mm. You are you are fighting against yourself almost because if you haven't if you don't have that in place and more to the point audio and visual when they're put together and when they go together properly mm -hmm. either because they've been designed that way or they've been very carefully chosen mm -hmm. um, the impact of that 
is i mean there there have been studies done that show i mean spotify for brands is a publication spotify came out with a few years ago audio ads are more than two times as likely to lift purchase intent than display ads um wow congruent sound and video enhances emotional impact by 1200 and 1207 percent all the, the there's loads of this work that's been done mm-hmm. but ultimately if you want to stand out from the crowd i'll give my strap line be seen be heard brand out loud because you're you, you're kind of you're doubling your your impact basically so good i love it i love your answer i've got uh, one final question before i answer I, I ask that um where's the best place to get in touch with you we'll put it in the show notes too but where's the best place to get in touch with you ben our best place to go is brandoutlouddesign.com okay. uh, you can get in touch with me there it's, uh, you can fill out the form there or for a contact form there or you can email me Perfect. At hello at brandoutlouddesign.com and uh yeah all my socials are there as well wonderful we'll put, again we'll put it in the show notes too um last question ben so we touched on a lot of things obviously we touched on you know brand um audio branding and we also talked about some of the changes that you've made in your life um it can be in either vein but if you were to tell the world one thing ben what would it be you know what you need to do just do it is that what you did does that work (laughs) is that what you did Ben? yeah but like i said three years later (laughs) just like my dad predicted (laughs) i got asked i got asked that question i was i was asked to talk to um uh students at uh, edinburgh college of music and sound Mm -hmm. here and it's it's fantastic um place that teaches young people how to kind of create sound for film tv Mm -hmm. and uh they asked me to come up with i started doing this fancy presentation and i thought it's just it's just not it's not me so Mm -hmm. i just wrote down on a piece of paper just effing do it and that was that was my advice um because yeah you can you can waste so much time and Mm -hmm. you won't know until you do it and you know newsflash when you do do it it probably won't be just right, but the sooner you do it, the sooner you can start pivoting. Yes. See yes. What, see what I, did there? I did. I did. There's like, it's like a drinking game. Like you have to say the word pivot during an interview. So for anyone who's <laughs> drinking, maybe coffee, it's earlier in the day, maybe. Um, we're not going to judge here at Pivot Me. Um, ben, I got to tell you something funny. So when I was younger, it's like when I was 18 and maybe 20, I went through this leadership academy. It's called Rapport. I don't even know if they're still around, but Rapport Leadership International or Institute or something like this. And their kind of tagline, once you go through the program, then you understand. Hopefully I'm not like sp- spoiling anything. I don't even know if they're still around, but um, it was JFDI, just focus and do it. But yeah. then it evolved to just fucking do it. And I, to yeah. this day, still have a little like um, paperweight that says JFDI and it sits on my desk and it's a reminder for quick execution. I mean, we, um, we, we think the answer is in another book, in another podcast, in another YouTube video. And, and yes, we're fans of all those things, but ultimately it's the execution that we almost are always missing. I like to say um, education without execution is just distraction. So if you're listening and you're like, oh, this is good, I wanna execute on it, but we don't, we've just effectively distracted ourselves. And so like Ben said, just do it, just, just do it. And if it's wrong, do it again. It's an iterative process. I think the problem is we think we have to get it right the first time. And if we get it right the first time, then we've just delayed our product or service way too long. It's supposed to be messy. And then we go back and we make it better. Yeah. I think a good question to ask yourself in those situations is what am I making this mean about me? And if you make a mistake. Whoa, say that again, Ben. Ben's like, we're wrapping up this interview. I'm going to drop this gold. Part two. No, I mean, yeah, I just... I ask myself this all the time, like, what am I making this mean? Mm. You know, and often with a mistake, it's loaded with all sorts of things, your fear of making a mistake, but it's, it's just a data point, as you Ooh. said. Yeah, it's so good. So the, the version that I, I use is, um, um, what story am I telling myself? But yeah. 
it's yeah. the same kind of idea. I, I really like this though. What, what does this make? What, what am I making this mean? It puts the, like you're crafting this and there's a good yes. chance it's not true. And even if it is true, maybe believing that isn't actually serving you. Exactly. So good. Ben, this was amazing. Thank you so much for coming today, both talking about your expertise and your company, but then also just kind of showing up authentically, being real and like, hey, this is what I'm doing. Here's some of the ways I procrastinate. Here's some of the ways that I self-sabotage. It's just so important to share that piece because someone out there needs to see you succeed. Someone is listening right now and go, well, that guy sounds a lot like me. That guy's saying the same things that I've said to myself. And when they see that you've been successful, that that your, your brand has grown, that you're doing these remarkable things, it gives them hope that it's available to someone like them. So thank you so much for showing up and, and being honest with us, Ben. No problem. I will say that for those of you listening, um, we are launching this new brand, Brand Outlay Design. And I, one of my big things I've been told is I have to sort my emailing list out and actually have an emailing yes, list because I don't, do. I'm really bad at this stuff. So if anybody wants to join, they can go to brandoutlooddesign.com, um, sign up for the emailing list. You will get um, a discount code as a Pivot Me listener. Yes. Um, and, you know, because we, we do all sorts of things like brand consultations and things and quite happy to offer. We've talked about having a discount, so we'll do that. Yes. Um, you absolutely need to go if... to his website and do that. So, so definitely take advantage of that. I hope you got some amazing information from our interview today, and I've set up the next video for you. So I'll see you over there at the next video.